Right, so welcome back to my Ayrton Senna driver career mode. I've been away for a few days. The Canadian Grand Prix weekend absolutely ruined me. And speaking of Canada, that is where we're racing today at the legendary Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. And as we can see, it is going to be a wet quality, which is very interesting because it was wet in real life quality as well. And now, when I say that I'm slow at this track, I mean it. I'm only expecting maybe a top 7, maybe not even a top 10. I don't like driving at this track. I don't like the curbs, the uphill curbs especially. It's very easy to spin. Um, but we're going to see how we get on. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm probably going to be driving a bit more on the slow lenient side. I'd rather just, you know, not go in a wall, do a Sergio Perez. But let's crack on, see how we do. And here it is. Now, as expected, it is raining. The Formula 1 AWS. I, I guess I won't read it. That's fine. Okay, so I do have a setup ready. Um, and we should be ready to go. So let's have it. Now, this is actually quite tricky because, I mean, it's going to be raining for the entire session, but it's just, it's suggesting that I go on the full wet tyres, and now, I have heard from many content creators when this game first came out, even after the handling patch, that full wets are sort of useless, and the inters are still the same speed, whether it's a little wet or full wet, so I'm actually going to start with a full wet lap, but then I'm immediately going to do an interlap. I'm actually going to do three laps this session. I'm going to do a full wet lap. I'm going to do an inters lap. And whichever tire is faster, I'll do a lap on that tire at the end. So that's the plan. Full wets, low fuel. Let's go. This is quite exciting, really. This is the first time I've played this game since my last video, which was about four days ago which was the uh, Monaco Ayrton Senna career mode video. So, you know, I've not driven in a while. I'm going to be a bit rusty, not to give excuses. Um, I mean, that's exactly what I'm doing, to be fair. Now, we have a lot of traffic, like a lot of traffic. I'm going to wait for this RB to go by, and now I'm going to go. Okay, here we go. On the full wets, let's see how it goes. My main aim is just don't spin, basically. Although, of course, I do want the lap to be fast. But you... Oh, it's so... Oh, it's so sketchy. Okay. We have made it out of turn one and two, though. Into the fast right. Massive mid oversteer. Oh, that's a wall. Massive mid corner oversteer. This is where Joe Guan Yu went off. And Logan Sargent. This is where Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez went off. I do no such thing. Of course, their situation was a little bit different because they were you know, in dry tyres and went on the wet line. Into the next chicane, I've banged the wall a little bit, that's fine. Massive oversteer. Now the issue I'm having is my engine braking. Because of the engine braking, in the dry it's fine. You get into the wet, it becomes a big, big struggle. That's what's causing the mid, uh, the mid corner oversteer, which is not fun. I've not been paying attention to my sector times whatsoever. But whoever this Aston is behind me, they are very quick and much quicker than me, which is, of course, not a nice thing. Into the final chicane. I actually could have used a lot more ERS that lap. If we come across the line, and it is going to be a P17, which I believe is actually last. Rough. Now, I knew that lap was pretty bad, but to be two seconds off my teammate is a little bit troubling, although Max Verstappen right down with me. We are both absolutely in the mud. So now I am going to try a lap on the intermediates, see how it feels, and then at the end I will do a lap on whichever tyre was faster. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I have time for a, set, a, a third lap. This might be my final attempt, so this sort of has to be everything. So let's go. Now, it's going to be absolutely key that I stay on the dry line. The drying line, I should say. Out of turn two, the car feels a lot more grippy than the full wets, so like, way more. Still suffering with mid-corner oversteer, but that's honestly fine. I can deal with that. You just have to counter-steer mid-corner, which is a bit sketchy, but it's fine. I can definitely break later in basically every single corner. Like I said, I don't have the most confidence in the world. 
into the next chicane. That was still a bit too early on the brakes, and I thought I was going to be late. But you can see, fastest sector one, 1 1.6 seconds up on my time. Again, too early on the brakes, but again, uh, it's useful information for my final run, if I get to do one, that is. The car is definitely better on intermediates than full wets, and it's staying on this line. On the drying line is into conditions. Outside the drying line is full wets. Into the final chicane, the wall of champions. Ayrton Senna avoids the wall of champions with a massive bit of oversteer. We cross the line to go P1. But keep in mind, I'm on the inters, everyone else on the full wets. And let's see if I can get one more lap in. Alright, so I am out, and I am going to get one final lap. And as you can see, there is barely any traffic at all. What is concerning, though, is now every single driver has switched to, in uh, switched to Inters. So this is going to have to be another brilliant lap from Futimus Crimitus the third. Here we go. Oh, that lap was almost everything. Very nearly. What's it going to be in terms of position? Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, you bastard! That lap was so bad. I thought I was cooking through the first sector, and then it all went away. I just, I kept braking way too early in every single corner, thinking I was going to be okay, and that mid-corner understeer truly made me fumble the bag. I also completely threw it away by not only using too much overtake too early on, and also out of the, out of the final hairpin, going to the back straight. I just was really slow, basically. Damn it! How, well, how big's the margin? Okay, it was three tenths of a second, which is quite a lot, but I reckon I could have found that and some. Like, genuinely. That lap was so horrid. I'm surprised that's even good enough for a P2. Like, I'm, sh I'm shocked, but... I'm happy with a P2, all things considered. It just hurts that if I was, like, 1% better at this game that pole position is easily mine but like i said p2 is great lando norris another absolute shocker in p11 i don't know what's going on with him to be fair it's a bit like sergio perez in real life i mean we have the third quickest car we should be p5 and 6 not p2 and 11 but anyway we're starting p2 and p11 for the race let's get there now and go for the win And here we are on a Sunday afternoon for the Canadian Grand Prix, the Du Grand Prix du Canada 2024. I assume the du is of in French. Bienvenue au Grand Prix de Canada. Look at that French ball knowledge. Anyway, we're starting P2. Like I said, I'm well pleased with that. Honestly, I mean, it was a horrible lap. But it's a good result. Do you know what I mean? So we take those. Now we are going to be running a hard medium strategy. I'm not sure if I like that, you know. Uh, my lap times on the hards are going to be extremely slow. The only positive side to this is it means that obviously in my second stint, I'm going to be like the fastest car on track by a mile. I wish you could see what the other cars were starting on. Like if I could see what... Um, my P1! I am! Hang on! Carlos Sainz is taking an engine penalty from P1, so I'm P1 now. 
All right, sure. <laughs> Great, I've inherited pole. What a time to be alive. But yeah, I I wish you could see what the other drivers were on. Cause like if the if everyone behind me is on mediums, I'm finished. If they're on hards, it's okay. But I'm gonna trust the team on this one. We're going hard medium strategy. Low fuel. We're ready for the Canadian Grand Prix. Let's go. And everyone behind me is on medium tires. This is gonna be a tough first few laps. But we are off to see the wizard. And it's a very dismal start. So much wheel spin. We go into turn one with the Ferrari of Leclerc. I've got a bit wide. He's going to have the better exit due to the... Oh! But ignore that. I definitely didn't just crash there. It's all right. We move. So we are in P2 off the start, which ain't that bad. Although, to be fair, if I had a slightly better start, I'd keep P1 fairly easily. And my tyres feel so horrible right now every single corner i'm getting massive oversteer and nearly spinning it's really really bad i'm hoping that fixes as my tires get warmer but but if that's gonna be like a constant issue this is not gonna be a fun race but yeah i, I come out the exit of a hairpin my car just spins that's pretty crazy i can't lie it comes max verstappen at one point was p18 on the grid Whilst I was P17, we've both recovered. We're both up there again. And at the end of lap one, I've lost one place. Honestly, not that mad. Gotta remember, I am on that hard compound tire. Every other person is on mediums. Gradual yellow flag. I think one of the Saubers have gone off. Oh, there are still yellow flags waving about. I don't know if... Mate, I could not drive this car right now. I have spun four times in the opening lap and a half. I have spun four times. This car is egregious. Every single corner there is oversteer. Verstappen has faster straight line speed than me even though we both have DRS. Makes no sense but we just move. I'm not going to have DRS on Charles Leclerc which I think you know what that means. It means I'm absolutely finished and yeah this car just it doesn't work. It feels terrible. Like, it's just, it's it's horrible. That's all I can say. I somehow have DRS. I'm not sure how. We take it, though. Very, very useful. Keeps me ahead of Verstappen for probably another lap, as I'm not going to be able to last long at all. And I think what I need to do, I need to just keep my lap time semi-consistent and, like, fast-ish. If Verstappen is going to just whiz by with DRS or go for a dive bomb, I might just let him go by. Because the whole point of this strategy is that I come back in the second half of this race when I pit. I blitz the timing boards and I gain a few positions. And I keep breaking too early there. I don't understand what's going on with me today. Here comes Verstappen with DRS. He's going to try and go around the outside, which is brave and stupid. Usually it's one or the other, but that's both. Right, so down here, I'm just going to let Verstappen go by. Because I'd rather just have a better lap time than fight him. He's going to be gone anyway. What about Russell as well? Is he feeling like it? Yes, he is. So now we just break. And all is good. Okay, fine. That worked out well. I lose, like, no time on my overall lap time. The faster cars are through. Lovely. Now, Sergio Perez is the next car behind me. But that shouldn't be too much of a threat. And honestly, I might just sit here and chill in Russell and Verstappen's DRS. It's boosting my lap times and keeping me close to them. So that's what I'm going to try and do, I think. Unless my car's going to do that, have a massive oversteer moment, and now I am under threat from the once great Sergio Perez. Oh my goodness. ERS is a bit on the low side in terms of capacity. I have to use like 30% down the main straight. Which isn't nice. George Russell takes the fastest lap. But we're fine. This is this is a perfectly okay situation. I can't lie. Leclerc is only two seconds up the road as well. Like, this is working out quite well so far. Right, I've lost DRS on Russell ahead. My car is terrible in every single way. Sergio Perez is probably going to whiz by alongside Lewis Hamilton. There goes Perez. I've been overtaken by Sergio Perez. That is one of the most humiliating things that can happen to you as a driver. My goodness. 
I feel like with how horrible my car feels, even if I was on medium tires, I'd probably be in the same situation with cars just whizzing by with like zero effort. Like, this is really bad. Lewis Hamilton, don't be a complete knobhead. Don't try something barbaric and get us both crashed. My goodness. I think that the main issue I'm having is I'm getting oversteer no matter what. On slow speed, high speed, careful on throttle, hard on throttle. It doesn't matter what I do, I get oversteer. We have another yellow flag somewhere at the back of the grid. Oh, that's going to be a red flag. Someone has lost it. And there it is. So we have a red flag, which is actually not a horrible thing. I'm lying. Yes, it is. I've realized that I'm on the hard tire, so... Huh. So what's going to happen is... Yeah, I know how red flags work. Everyone is going to use the, the hard tire until the end, I assume. I'm going to be on the mediums until the end. Now, keep in mind, that is going to be what? 16 laps on mediums? My tires are going to be so finished near the end. It's unreal. And obviously, I can't put on more hard tyres, because then I'll have to make another stop. So, mediums is really the only option I have. I don't like that at all, to be honest. That's, that's like, completely just not worked to my advantage. I thought it did at first, but it hasn't. Alright, well, we're going to restart the race on medium compound tyres, and we're going to the end. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I can actually have a, a good start. I don't know what that was illegal position on Perez. It's it's not a bad start from me. In fact, I could actually go up the inside of Sergio Perez. He has a massive lockup and goes miles off track. That's more like the Perez in real life we know and love. There he is. Welcome back. So we do manage to gain one place off the start. Now, this is interesting because the roles are reversed. At the start of this race, and until about a minute ago, I was on the hards being overtaken by everyone. Now, everyone else is on the hards, and I've got the mediums to try and skew, catch up, and overtake the cars ahead. But, like I said, I think of how horrible my car feels, I don't think I'm even that quick to get past these cars ahead. I'm also really struggling in the acceleration and straight line speed areas on this track. I don't know if the other cars are just running less downforce, so I assume that's why. But I have no straight line speed compared to these cars. I know this entire episode all I've done is complain about my car, but I'm just being honest. I ain't gonna sit here and be like, oh, this car feels great when it objectively doesn't. DRS gets enabled. I've completed a goal, apparently. I, I don't remember doing that, but there you go. Nice one. I sort of need Leclerc and Russell, for that matter, to sort of clear off from Verstappen a little bit. Because we're just going to be stuck in a DRS train until the end of this race. We need a car to pull away a little bit, but no one's really doing that. And we do have our first mid-race goal, which is going to be overtake the strap-on by lap 13. I genuinely don't think I can do that. So DRS gets enabled, and we need someone to go for a move up front, but I don't think they are. They're not. That's, that's the only way I'm going to overtake, is if someone ahead goes for an overtake and I could do a little third party off it. That's the only way I'm going to get by, because these three, and in fact, most of the top ten, the Ferraris, the Mercedes, and the Red Bulls, are quicker than me, like all of them. Alright, so it's been a couple laps and nothing's really changed. I can't get anywhere close to Verstappen and the ones ahead, but hang on a minute. Russell and Leclerc are scrapping a little bit. If I could just have a little... No. I was going to say, if I could have a little bit of acceleration, I could try and get past Verstappen, but his car's just quicker than mine. Um, me and the top three and also Hamilton behind, we are starting to build a little bit of a gap to Perez, and then there's a little bit of a gap to an RB, and then there's quite a large gap to the cars behind. So there is still, at the moment, a seven-way fight for the win. But we are just all stuck in a DRS train. Uh, the top three are slowly getting away from me. That little moment where Leclerc and Russell were scrapping, that was actually big. Without that, Hamilton probably would have got me on this lap. Because I definitely wouldn't have been in DRS. And that, that thing, catch Verstappen or overtake Verstappen by lap 13 just isn't going to happen. I literally can't get close to him, let alone overtake. And it's this hairpin's exit where he rate the top three really get away from me. Which, I don't really understand how. If I try and go faster on that exit, I will just spin. And it's basically just one large management game to stay in P4. Because I ain't catching up unless the DNF or, like, some overtakes going on. Here comes Hamilton trying something really, really stupid again. 
I'm just going to stop him in his tracks because that is such an idiotic thing to do, but he's doing it anyway. Now, this is going to be very, very hard to keep Hamilton away. I only have a very small amount of ERS left. It just doesn't recharge. My recharge is really, really bad. For an entire lap, I only gain about 20% ERS. And if I try and save like even more, I get overtaken by Hamilton. So I'd say right as it stands right now, the goal is to just try and maintain P4 using a lot of ERS management. That's all I can really get right now. There is no way I can get like further up. Go on, someone spin here and not me. Go on, spin. No, <laughs> that would have been funny. Russell and Leclerc fighting. Oh, I need to break, break, break. Oh, Jesus. That was almost the biggest accident Formula 1 has seen in the past three decades. Oh my goodness, I probably could have got the stab in there if I was a bit more feisty. But honestly, if I didn't <laughs> if I didn't break as much as I did there, I would have gone straight up Verstappen's ass. He would have gone up Russell's ass, Russell up Leclerc's ass, and then just a huge crash, and we're all out. If that happens again, though, I might break a little bit earlier so that I can carry more speed through that chicane than the likes of Verstappen. As the Ferrari of Leclerc locks up at the chicane! and loses P1 and goes all the way down to P6 and then Russell locks up what is going on Russell somehow recovers that and gets back into P2 I have no idea how he's done that and how he's you know slowly going away from me I have no idea how that works I thought I was about to get Russell as well and go straight up to P2 how is Russell so quick what Look, Russell in a straight line with no DRS or ERS is quicker than me with DRS and ERS. How bad is my straight line speed? Okay, well, I have managed to gain a place at least. That was a bit crazy. Every single car just started locking up. What the... Right, for future reference, I've figured out why my car feels so terrible. It's the, um, it's the transmission. My transmission settings are really, really bad. I think what I need to do is I need to increase my differentials and then in all future events, just take off engine braking. Because what's happening is that my car is switching from like engine braking to non-engine braking mid-corner, which is how it works. But because of that, it's causing me huge oversteer. That's what I'm struggling with. Like you'll see it here. As soon as I exit like third gear, the car has a massive switch from engine braking to non-engine braking, and that's what caught that catches me out. Here comes Lewis Hamilton down the straight. I still have no ERS, which is shocking, because engine braking helps to regenerate ERS. I've got engine braking and I've got barely any ERS charge. So imagine what it would be like if I had no engine braking at all. It would have been a very bad situation. But the front two are starting to get away a little bit. I suspect my medium tyres are going to start going off a little bit soon. You can see the rears are absolutely finished. And yeah, this car has gone to shit, like, honestly. Here comes Hamilton trying something stupid again. What a surprise. That seems to be his theme this race. That's what he's up to. And it looks like I'm not going to get DRS down the back straight. And there's nothing I can really do about it. My driving is really bad. This car feels terrible. My tyres are starting to go off. I've got no straight line speed. There's nothing I can really do. It's like trying to drive a Williams in the top five. That's what it feels like right now. Here comes Hamilton. There's literally nothing I can do to defend other than just go to the inside and break a bit later than him. And I somehow stay ahead. I don't know how. <laughs> we take it though. But what I need is I need Russell and Verstappen to scrap so I can get back in that DRS. Without it, I will probably be relegated down to either P4 or I might fall even further back. This is not good. There are still like six or seven laps left as well. Like this is a very long race. Come on, Russell Verstappen. Fight, 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 fight. Go on, you can see him up there. Have it. No, <laughs> they're not fighting. Here comes Hamilton. To the inside, this is very scary. That was very scary and frightening. I don't like it. I'm purely staying ahead because I'm late breaking, and that's the only reason why. Oh, someone, Hamilton! Hamilton just locked up in the background and went miles away. 
Oh my goodness, everyone's locking up today. Sergio Perez, Lewis Hamilton, George Russell, Charles Leclerc. My goodness, all of the front runners making massive mistakes. And I'm not, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say, to be honest. The AI making mistakes and I'm not. Eh. Honestly, I might not need to use ERS down this straight. Sergio Perez is so far back. Oh my goodness, that straight line speed. Okay, I'm going to have to defend a little bit, but not really. That's big. Oh, I've hit the world champions a little bit there. I mean, Senna is a world champion, so it's only right. Here comes Perez again to the inside. I'm going to break a lot later than he, 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 he did. I forgot what language I can speak then. Don't worry. I managed to hold on to P3. That's actually huge. That means I can save up a lot more ERS than I otherwise would. Verstappen and Russell, four seconds up the road. I need to charge my ERS. Piss off, I'm not charging shit, mate. Here comes Checo Perez, and honestly, I wouldn't mind him trying to overtake. Okay, never mind. I was thinking, well, you know, because then I can get DRS down the back straight. As something goes wrong there, I don't know if Perez locked up, but it allows Leclerc to try and make a move. Why is everyone locking up? I know they made an update to the AI to make them prone to more mistakes, but... This is a bit excessive. Sergio Perez hangs on to that P, uh, P, what is it, P4, but I don't think he's got DRS. This is actually very big. I can harvest my ERS an absolute shit ton throughout these next like, lap or two and have so much to use on the final two laps. This is big. All right, here comes Sergio Perez. I'm gonna have to use a lot of my ERS here, which I didn't really want to do. There goes Sergio Perez to the outside. I need to break very late into the chicane. I've made the corner. Sergio Perez stays behind, and we're okay. The top two are just sort of gone. Like, they're out of there. They have not looked back. They are gaining about two seconds a lap. But to be honest, I'm also holding everyone else back. You can see, if you look on the track map in the bottom left of your screen, there's me, and then there's about 12 cars behind me. And then a quite a large gap to Lando Norris. Like, I am holding half the grid up. And I'm so unbelievably slow. But I'm managing to hold on. And there's just a DRS train building. That's all that's really happening. Right, here we go again. Chica Perez. Is he going to go for it? Here he comes. ERS enabled. He doesn't really have it in him, does he? He hasn't got the balls. Why is there a Ferrari on my inside now? I don't like that at all. That was very scary. Okay, penultimate lap of the race begins now. Sergio Perez going for it around the outside. That's very brave. I have the inside line. I'm going to have to swing one to the outside and just try and get a better exit, which I think I can do. Come on. That was a good bit of defending. All right, down the back straight for the penultimate time of this race. I'm honestly just going to stick to the inside and hope I've got enough speed. That's all I can really do. But I don't want to use all my ERS, so here comes Perez to the outside. Bosh, Bosh, we're okay. And now we begin the final lap of this race. And honestly, although this entire episode I've just been non-stop complaining, and it's pretty difficult not to when you're driving a horrible car on a horrible game, I'm happy with a podium. I said at the start of this video that Canada is one of my weaker tracks, might even be my weakest alongside Qatar but if I could bring on a podium I think that is an absolutely huge result but what, what, is a, what, is a, what is an absolute downer is that Red Bull and Ferrari are ahead and Mercedes all of them of me right now in terms of points scored meanwhile Lando Norris is chilling at about P13 so that means that Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull are all going to catch up into, in the constructors but here we go down the back straight, the final time. Come on, I've got lots of ERS to use. Is Perez going to go for it? He goes for the outside. It's not going to be enough. Max Verstappen wins. Round the final chicane. A little tap on the War Champions. I actually missed it. But we cross the line to take a podium. And I take that. Absolutely. That is a fine result. A horrible race. Horrible driving, horrible car, horrible conditions, horrible track. Everything is horrible, but I still manage to have a good result. Okay, so here we are. This is the final results. I was only a tenth away from the fastest lap of the race. Honestly, that's 
<laughs> a podium and nearly getting the fastest lap is way more than I expected. Lando Norris actually manages to get one singular point in this race. Started P10, finished P10. But what is concerning is that Esteban Ocon started P12 behind Lando, finished ahead of him. Carlos Sainz started behind him, finished three places ahead. Lance Stroll started P20 and only finished two seconds behind him. That is massively concerning for Lando Norris. Especially because Pierre Gasly, who started P9, DNF. So Lando Norris was actually P11 at one point and was down. But because of Gasly's DNF, he managed to start or finish where he started. Looking at the driver standings. Oh, that's not a good sight, is it? Because of Verstappen's victory, he manages to gain by 10 points. Actually, no, 11 points on me. So the gap is only 12. Meanwhile, Lando Norris scores his second point of the season. 100 away from me, mind you. Or like 90-something. Um, and sits P14 in the drivers. And moving over to the constructors, we are in P2. A 35-point gap. Now, of course, Red Bull do gain a significant amount, getting P1 and 4. Meanwhile, I get P3 and 10. Uh, Mercedes and Ferrari both catch up as well, which ain't ideal. But, you know, all things considered, that was a fine race weekend. I'm happy with it. P2 on the grid, P3 in the race. That's fine. That's going to be all from me. And I'll see you whenever, because that was terrible. My goodness. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.